something that seems to be really overlooked when we when we talk to successful people in the industry. Um, this industry, whether you, no matter what you do on it, if you're an actor or a producer, or hair and makeup, you travel a lot. Like you said, you know, you're you're always you're a migrant worker, as you said. It does not do good things to your personal relationships with family, friends, wives, you know, children. But you, I was hoping perhaps could give us a few tidbits. You know, not too much info if you don't want, but about because you make it work. You've got a wife. You've got three little girls. Three daughters. Uh, Very blessed. And um, you, they're in LA, and you're all over the damn world, and you make it work. You're a happy person. Well, I mean, I think I'm first and foremost, I'm blessed with a, a beautiful wife who understands. I would say choose your partner well, you know, um, and uh, you know choose somebody that will understand your lifestyle. You know, if you're a doctor, or you know, you choose somebody who understands that, or if you're a filmmaker and you're going to travel around the world, you can't have somebody who's not going to want you to leave the house ever because. You know, and I, would, I will say that I think a big part of it just comes down to discipline. Like, I am blessed with a beautiful wife, three daughters, and I don't want to do anything to screw that up. You know, I don't want, I'm, I really do not want to fuck up my home life, excuse my language. I feel extremely fortunate to have the family I do. I come from a good family, so I'm just, I try and stay disciplined. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't go out and party a lot. When I go to work, I go to work, you know? And I think that's the truth too with those that work in the business. You know, it's Sunday. I just came and I was, you know, the production designer and I were working all day. The DP, we were trading emails, the director, you know, filmmaking is a lifestyle. It's not a nine to five job. And if you're gonna go away, you really need to be obsessed with that lifestyle. If you're obsessed with the partying and the kind of tangential kind of things that come along with it, you're probably gonna burn out pretty quick. You know, even big actors or actresses that get caught up in that, you know, the tabloids are full with stories of people who have mm -hmm. screwed up their home life because they've allowed, whether it be drugs or alcohol or, you know, extramarital affairs or any of that kind of stuff become obsessed with, then you're kind of taking your eye off the ball. You know, I feel incredibly lucky that people entrust me with millions of dollars to make their movies, and I don't want to screw that up. So when I go away, I work, I sleep, I work, I work out, you know, I see some friends, yeah. I keep it simple. And that would be my advice, like, keep it simple. Know that the film is the thing. As Shakespeare said, the play is the thing, the film is the thing. It's not about you. You know, I'm sitting here talking to you because I'm fortunate enough to and I haven't screwed up somebody's movie, so they keep giving me more, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe I've screwed a couple up. But, you know, so, and I take that very seriously, and I would say to others that are set, setting out with that is, take that seriously, you know, there's millions of dollars online, and if people who write those checks are going to entrust you with that, they're going to want to know that you're somebody who's disciplined, that understands that you're being hired for a very serious job, you can get caught up in the kind of, you know, fun of it. And, and filmmaking is, that's why I say it's a lifestyle. I mean, I've, you know, I've worked with mercenaries. I've climbed mountains, you know what I mean? I've done all, all kinds of wild and wacky rid, rode horses up in blizzards to make a film, you know? And I'm often like, geez, you know, I remember a couple years ago we were scouting a movie in uh, Louisiana at Angola Prison and the warden was taking us around and I said, can we go to death row? And she said, sure, why not? And five minutes later, we were walking down death row, and I thought, geez, no, no other business would anyone let you just walk down death yeah. row without, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like filmmaking opens up a lot of those kind, of, and you know, I don't want to sound morbid, I wanted to go to death row to see if it would work for the movie, but I was taken aback at how easy it was. Mm -hmm. And the point I'm making is that I feel very fortunate to have that, and I'm not gonna allow partying or get caught up in, you know, you know, trying to, you know, fooling around with anyone, you know, to get in the way of that. Do you ever just block out weeks or months at a time and say, I'm, I'm going to stay in Los Angeles? Yeah, I do. I mean, having three young daughters and, and, and a house in Los Angeles, I have to work. So I'm, I'm often, you know, you take the job at hand. If you're fortunate to have multiple offers, you take which one you think is the most exciting or best to you or you just take the job you have, you know? Um, like any other profession, filmmaking is a profession and you need to work at it to make money. So um, uh, sometimes I'll say, you know, I'm gonna go on a vacation um, 
and I do that, and I try and be very disciplined when I'm home, but I'm, as my daughters will tell you, I'm not that disciplined about it. I'm always on the phone, I'm always in the lifestyle. And probably first and foremost, because I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't look at, I look at filmmaking as a job, because it is a job, but it's also a passion for me. And I would have to say, every time I get an opportunity to make a film, I get really excited about it. I get excited about the challenges, and, and you, you know, like I said, you get to meet new and exciting people and work with different people. And that's really cool. And I feel really blessed that I've been given that chance. So, you know, you have to find the balance of home. My daughters have come and my wife have come all over the world. They were in Morocco, they've been in Romania, they've been in Sweden, they've been in New York, wow. Louisiana, Georgia. I mean, they've gone in Canada, you know, they've, they've followed me. And that's a thing, that's one thing I do is like, if I'm gonna be somewhere for a period of time, it's part of my deal now that my family gets to come. Mm -hmm. So I bring them. And uh, one of my, my youngest daughter had come back from Morocco and a couple of her friends were talking about going to Legoland. And she got really upset in front of them and she said, why can't we go to Legoland? Why do we need to go to Morocco and Greece and Europe? You know, why can't we go to normal places, you know? <laughs> and I kind of laughed. I thought, oh, she, you know, and that's really kind of been their life. You know, their vacations are where I'm working. So, you know. Well, Patrick Newell, Nuts and Bolts producer. My man. My man, Douglas Caballero. <laughs> Thanks for thank being here. Thank you very here. much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, and thank you for watching Gatekeepers here at Nikki Beach at the Spoke Club at the Toronto International Film Festival.